So we've talked about a lot of things. We talked about how to organize our ideas into three visitor center points. We talked about presenting in a style that connects. We talked about how to answer questions in a way that inspires confidence. Now, the assignment that you have for the second half of the, uh, the second half of the course is to do a team presentation. We really haven't talked about how to present as a team. So that's what we're going to do on this video. Now, what are the challenges associated with presenting as a team? Well, the most important thing is you need to seem like a team. There's all sorts of things that you can do when multiple people are presenting that make you not seem like a team. You can, you can, you can transition poorly. You can not have a unified story. You can have sort of different energy levels. There's all sorts of things that will make you not seem like a team. So the most important idea is how do we, when we do a team presentation, actually seem like a team. We seem like a people that know each other and like each other and work well together. So that's the idea that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about some ideas that are going to help you in that regard. Now, there's three things in particular that we think are important here. Number one, you have to introduce yourselves as a team. That's the first one. Number two, you have to rehearse as a team. And then finally, you have to handle Q&A as a team. So we're going to talk about these three ideas. So let's talk about the first one, which is you need to you need to introduce yourselves as a team. Let's talk about the introductions. How do you do introductions? What people typically do when they do team presentations is they say, well, before we get started, let me introduce everybody. We actually think that's a bad idea. We think you should not introduce everybody until you've introduced the key themes of your message. Because once you've introduced the key themes, then you can introduce every person in the context of the presentation so you can show how they fit in to the overall presentation. It makes you seem more like a team. It shows you what the role is in the presentation. So let me give you an example of how it would go. Let's go back to the presentation that we did before, which is let's say that we're doing a team presentation trying to persuade people to come to Scheller to get their MBA. And we've got a whole bunch of people, and let's say there's three of us that are going to be on the team uh, presenting this idea. And Let's say it's myself, let's say it's JD, and let's say it is Julie. Let's say those are the three people on the team. So let's say that I'm the captain. So I'm going to do the hook, the MO, and the three points. And then JD might take point one, and then Julie might take points two and three, and then I might do the recap and the wrap and the call to action. So that might be how we would lay it out. But now, how would we actually, how would I introduce them? Well, what I would do is I would do the hook, the MO, and the three points, then I would introduce the team. So it goes something like this. So we know that the reason you're here is because at some level, you're probably not satisfied with your career. Maybe you want to make more money. Maybe you want to move up in your organization. Maybe you want to sort of learn sort of a new side of the business. Uh, maybe you want to move to a whole different business altogether. Well, by coming to Georgia Tech, you're going to get that opportunity. Now, there's three things that we're going to talk to you about today. Number one, the great networking opportunities. Number two, the flexible schedule. And number three, uh, how professors provide real-world knowledge. So let me introduce the team. JD is going to be talking to you about great networking. He's actually a great networker himself, and he really knows a lot about all the networking opportunities here at Georgia Tech. Julie is going to be talking about points two and three, the flexible schedule and then the real world knowledge of professor. Again, she's got a lot of experience with that, and so she's gonna do a great job of helping you understand, and then I'm gonna recap at the end. So what have I done? I've not just introduced the team, I've introduced the team in the context of how they fit in to the presentation. That's gonna give them, that's, excuse me, that's gonna give your audience a sense of you guys being a team, that you've actually thought this through, and everybody has a clearly assigned role. So that's the idea, that's the first point is you have to introduce yourselves as a team because that's going to make you seem more like a team. So the second thing you have to do to seem more like a team is you have to rehearse as a team. Now this is somewhat obvious, but I will tell you it's, it, it, it's astonishing to me how often teams don't really rehearse together. Um, usually when I, very often I'll work with teams to help them prepare and what they'll do is, uh, what they'll do is they'll say they'll prepare all of their pieces individually, but they'll never really rehearse as a team. Well the problem with that is that you really never ha allow your presentation to sort of gel as a group. You never work out the transitions. You never sort of, you, you never get a sense of how long everybody else is going. So you have to really rehearse as a team. And so how do you rehearse as a team? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that you actually get together and practice the entire presentation from beginning to end without stopping like it's a play. 
because that's really what a team presentation is. It's a play. It's, it's like a little play. It's like a business play where everybody has their roles and everybody has to sort of work well together. It's just like in a play, just like in The Wizard of Oz or Hamilton or anything like that. They have to practice together. All right. Um, so that's the first thing. You practice together, you assign each other times, and you see how you do. But the main thing is just practice together. Um, what are some of the things that you can do during the rehearsals? Well, one thing that's really important is just to practice the transitions. That's going to help you seem like a team. So when I transition to JD, I don't just stop talking and then have JD start. What I say is, now let me introduce JD. He's going to talk about point one, great networking. See, that's a nice transition. And when JD's done, he's going to say, so now that's great networking. Let me introduce Julie. She's going to talk about the next two points, the first one being how Georgia Tech offers a flexible schedule. Nice, clean transitions. You're handing the ball off in a nice, clean way. You show that you know each other. You show that you've worked well together. That's the idea. So transitions are important. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about in terms of rehearsing as a team is what do you do when you're not presenting? What does the non-presenting parts of the team do? Well, the main thing you need to do is you need to be paying attention. You need to look engaged. Um, a lot of times we'll see people looking down. They'll be looking at their cell phones. They'll be looking around. That shows you, that, that does not convey a sense that you're a team. You want to be looking at the other person, showing that you're really interested, giving this sense of being really engaged. So that's a really important part. That's really important. So be, be aware of the way you are when you're not on camera and, and when you're not in front, of, when you're not sort of in front and center in the presentation. All right, so uh, the, last, the last thing we want to talk about is Q&A. How do you do Q&A as a team? Well, the most important thing is you've got to follow all the same rules that we talked about with Q&A in general. You've got to prepare for the Q&A. You've got to think about what your answers are going to be. You've got to keep it tight. But in a team presentation, there's a couple of other things you've got to think about, which is, first of all, who's going to be the captain? And then second of all, we've got to be careful of piling on, or what some people call bolt tightening. So let's talk about the first one. Somebody has to be the captain. Uh, in this presentation, I would probably be the captain. Usually who starts the presentation, that person's the captain of the quarterback. So when the questions come in, if it's not clear who should take the question, then that person, he or she, whoever's the captain, is gonna hand the, is gonna hand the question off. So if the question comes in and it's not clear, I would say, JD, why don't you take that one? Or Julie, why don't you take that one? That gives a sense that you guys have worked together, know each other, and have a sense of, uh, a sense of team spirit, a sense of teamness, if you will. Uh, so that's the first thing is just making sure that you're coordinated in terms of how you handle it. The other thing, this is a really important thing, is this idea of piling on, or some people call it bolt tightening, bolt tightening. Um, the idea is that when somebody ans ans answers the question, you answer the question, let's say I answer the question, but maybe JD had a little bit extra idea that he wanted to add in, and so he does a little bolt, he'll tighten the bolt a little bit more and say, let me add one extra thing. That really undermines the sense of teamness. I'm not saying you can't ever add on, but I think it's usually a good idea when somebody answers the question just to let them answer it and, and show confidence in that other team member. When you start adding on or bolt tightening with that person, it sort of undermines that sense of confidence. So that's the idea. So again, how do we present well as a team? You've got to rehearse as a team. You've got to, excuse me, the first thing is you've got to introduce yourselves as a team. Then you've got to rehearse as a team and you gotta do Q&A as, Q &A as a team. So use these ideas in your team presentations, you'll do a great job.